So now that the dust has begun to settle around possibly one of the greatest commercial failures in the history of computer gaming, that's Concord obviously, the recriminations and the blame game have now started in full swing. And the truth has now been revealed that the real reason that Concord collapsed so spectacularly was an atmosphere of toxic positivity. In this video, I'm going to go briefly into why I think the problems with Concord probably didn't stem from toxic positivity. Then I want to talk about what I think toxic positivity actually does look like in the gaming community and why we get good results sometimes when gamers don't engage in toxic positivity. So Colin Moriarty on the Sacred Symbols podcast has come out with the number that he believes due to his sources that Concord lost in the end. And that is a whopping 400 million US dollars, not including the price of acquiring Firewalk Studios. This would make Concord, even if we adjust for inflation, the greatest financial failure in the history of Sony as a company. Now, many people have been quite skeptical around this number, but I think many of the people that were posting skeptically on Twitter in response or on journalistic articles about this didn't actually watch the clip of the podcast. So what Colin actually says during the podcast is that the development was going so poorly over at Firewalk Studios that as the game progressed into 21-22, there still was no minimum viable product that was supposed to be this chaos, aka Concord game. Now keep in mind that we know at this time the standard production budget for a Sony title, AAA title in these days is around 200 to 250 million. That's around the budget of the Spider-Man games. And so the reason that Concord comes to this insane whopping $400 million price tag is that the development of the game was so troubled that it was essentially developed twice. It basically received double the funding and double the time of two Spider-Man titles, thus resulting in the $400 rather than $200 million price tag that most people were floating around. And then now we have to ask this question. Why did Concord get a do-over? Why was it allowed to exhaust the entire budget of one whole production game for Sony and then just begin again with a new budget? Well, according to Colin, and of course backed up by senior editors at reliable journalistic outputs like Kotaku, it was due to a culture of toxic positivity where the upper ups at Firewalk Studios and Sony were so behind the game that the hard working grunts at these studios just couldn't raise their voice and speak out against the obvious horrible mess. In the end, it's the horrible executives at Sony and Firewalk Studio that are to blame and the staff really were just doing their best. Now I do not doubt for a second that there is a certain element of truth to this. There is at any company you've ever worked with, we all know what it's like for failures higher up to come down and affect us, the average worker. My favorite memory of this was once I was working with a professor and we had, I think, about 150 essays to mark. They were pretty long essays. They're about 5,000 words each. And these were these were final essays for like graduating students. They're quite like sophisticated. And uh, normally what happens in most of these cases is the professor running the course will go to the subsidiary people that are helping out with the course. Maybe they're uh, graduate students or they're more junior lecturers and they will mark a few of the papers and say, hey, here's the kind of vibe from this course. Here's the kind of boundaries we're marking on. Here's the way I like to give feedback. Now go away and mark these essays for me and have them back by, the, by this date. Well, this professor, because I knew them quite well, didn't do that and just assumed I would just mark all the essays on the course on my own with my own initiative. And so she emails me 48 hours before all the essays need to be marked. And she says, old man Banjo, how was marking the essays? To which I said, what essays? I thought you were doing them and were going to give some on to me once you were finished doing an overview. So we've all been in that situation where you have to stay up for 48 hours straight, drinking coffee while you have the flu, marking 150 undergraduate essays until you lose your mind. And I'm sure people at Concord went through similar experiences. I'm not discounting that. But come on, man, as a certain aging politician would say. Toxic positivity is when Dave down the street thinks that his hot dog business is about to make more money than it really is, so he's going to franchise all over the country. 
When the Soviet government is shipping trains of empty cotton out of Uzbekistan and saying that they're full of cotton, that's not toxic positivity. That's just lying and ideology and when politics mixes with trying to function as a business. It is clear to anyone with eyes why Concord was so heavily backed by executives at these companies. They thought the style and ideology of the game was going to reach out to a new generation of gamers, particularly Gen Alpha, Gen Z, and people that don't generally play computer games. And it was going to be this whole revolutionary IP for Sony. Holding to an ideological goal and view is not toxically positive. It's just called having principles. They've stood by those principles and released the game, and this is the result. And guess what? If you work in a situation for a company that has certain ideological, political, or societal principles, and you're an underling to those person, well, guess what? Your job is to fulfill their end goals. That's what being an employee is a lot of the time. In short, I don't buy this as an excuse for one second. It's a misuse of what toxic positivity really is. A much better example of toxic positivity is just the way a lot of gamers respond to mass media. One of the things I've been seeing lately is the weird, weird hype around Dragon Age Veilguard. If you look at it, really, we have very little reason to be hyped about Dragon Age Veilguard after the performance of Bioware really since Dragon Age 2? But despite all the evidence to the contrary, we're seeing huge hype around Veilguard, and I think we'll continue to see it, and I think the game will probably sell pretty well, despite my hopes that Bioware will just go away and never come back again. Why is that? Because a lot of gamers are so desperate for a good RPG. I've said this before about Baldur's Gate 3. I don't think Baldur's Gate 3, under the circumstances of, say, 2001, if we adjust the game for what it would have been in 2001, would have been as successful because back in those days between, I want to say, 1990 and 2005, we had good RPGs out the wazoo. But AAA game developers have done a really good job of trying to destroy good games, in particular RPGs. They've got a thing about trying to ruin RPGs lately. And so it took an indie studio like Larian with an absurdly massive budget for an indie studio, an indie budget that was in fact larger than many AAA gaming studios to finally get a functioning CRPG again. And yet gamers feel the need to be positive about things because heck, it's all they're getting these days. And a great example of why gamers shouldn't do that is what we've seen with World of Warcraft. Now, let me just go through this real quickly for you if you're not a World of Warcraft player. So World of Warcraft has really been dropping off since a big expansion quite a few years ago called Legion, which everyone kind of liked and it was pretty popular and it kind of brought the game into a new into a new era of development. And that kind of teetered off for the past few years until we had an expansion called called Shadowlands, which I think everyone most people did not like then we had another one dragonflight kind of pulled things back a little bit but overall general discontent with the game now Tr chris medson the main story designer is back blizzard have listened they've added just a lot of quality of life features that fans of the game have been asking and complaining about and complaining about for years and suddenly if the mythic number so that that's people that run dungeons if those are anything to go by the player base has doubled since the launch of this new expansion and uh, positivity around the game is probably at its all, an all-time height, I think, since the release of the Legion expansion. And the game isn't in this state because of all of the toxically positive fans that thought everything about the game was great, including Torghast, for those of you that played it. Part of the reason, I mean, there are other reasons, but part of the reason the game is in a good state now is that people raise complaints and raise complaints and raise complaints, and Blizzard did something about it, and now we're all having fun, or at least I am and Concord and what we've seen from Ubisoft stock price lately are both great examples. I've done videos on those if you want to check them out on my channel. Those are examples where consumers can act, not buy a game and companies will have to reform or go bust. That's just the reality. And that's exactly why we should avoid toxic positivity. Speaking of toxic positivity, or I mean, just no, po actual positivity. Speaking of positivity, uh, it would help me out if you click the like and subscribe button. I'm a small channel. I try and upload about five times a week at the moment. And if you enjoy gaming news and commentary well that's uh, that's what i do here and until then i'll see you in the next video peace